This video covers the aspects of Guardium Appliance installation and configuration in the standalone and enterprise scenarios. Guardium is data activity monitoring tool, which is able to track access to sensitive data in databases, files and big data stores. Necessity to monitor privileged users assumes the monitoring of remote and local sessions, so Guardium is mainly implemented using agents which are named software tab. ESTA. These agents are sniffers and forward traffic to specialized appliance, the collector. The collector parses SQL's I operation or NoSQL data commands, then analyze them and based on policies can audit, notify, report or block data access or activity. One collector installation is named as standalone. Most Guardian installations monitor dozens or hundreds of data silos, and the production infrastructure includes many collectors integrated by aggregators. They are responsible for aggregation and the duplication of audited data. To simplify management, Guardian provides the specialized aggregator known as a central manager, which centralizes many operations like patching, user management, synchronization, queries, dashboards, groups, data sources, and the like. Central Manager Unavailability limits access to other appliances, so the common installation implements CM Backup, which can be promoted to CM Role in case of damage of the primary one. The multi-appliance Guardian installation is named as Enterprise One. There are three types of appliance platform. Hardware, hardware delivered by IBM with pre-installed software on it, software, installed on a self-delivered hardware and virtual, installed as a virtual machine using VMware or Hyper-V hypervisor. Regardless of chosen platform, the appliance can be installed on this which natively supports Red Hat 6. The Guardian Tech Note provides information about minimal requirements for appliance, but for production installation you should consider the machine with minimum 64 GB of RAM 12 CPU cores and 600 gigabytes of fast disk. Best option are 15K RPM worked in RAID 10. On my demo, I use VMware Workstation 12. However, installation on ESX or Hyper-V should look very similar. Now I am preparing the VM template for appliance. I selected the custom template for workstation 12. We will use the ISO installator, so last option here is OK. Guardian is based on Red Hat 6 64-bit and this OS guest settings has to be selected in the template. Then I'm pointing the appliance location and its name. In this case, it will be call one. The minimum requirements for appliance to support all functionalities are four CPU cores, 24 gigabytes of RAM, one network interface, and 400 gigabytes of hard disk. In this example, I'm creating a terabyte storage for VM because starting from version 10.12, the Guardian uses X4 file system and large volumes are fully supported. If you will separate access to appliance console from network where monitored resources are located or you will trunk two NIC cards to provide high availability, you need minimum two network cards. You can set up any number of network cards, but additional ones can be used only for gather traffic from spam ports, what is uncommon scenario. The appliance template has been created and we can start installation now. First scenario focuses on collector installation. We need to attach the ISO image to template before we start machine. In case of installation on physical machine, the image should be bound on DVD or placed on flash drive. 
The ISO installer and licenses can be downloaded by customer from IBM Passport Advantage site. The business partners should have access to it from the value bank. In case of proof of concept, the business partner should contact with local IBM security team to obtain media and license keys. Inside Gallium installer package there are two ISO files. One with auto prefix, which provides fully unattended installation for collector. From my point of view, the no auto image is more usable because provides additional installation options. In this case, I'm attaching auto image and power machine on. So, standard collector installation with predefined file system where it started. Uh, it requires time because in this case we have a terabyte hard disk and formatting of this large volume takes time. You noticed that collector installation based on Red Hat Anaconda installer and finally the RPM packages are installed. Some of them are Gardly related. Appliances based on Red Hat but do not provide root access. Only Gardly support team has rights to log in on it with super user grants and make manual system modifications. Installer finished all tasks and now system is rebooted. Garden bootloader waits some time for user interaction to avoid crash loop. In case of repeated problems with appliance startup, you can wait or force system to boot on demand. First appliance startup takes time, especially when huge storage is defined. Because internal audit database is configured at this stage, Guardian uses MySQL Turbine for an audit storage. Data are placed in the relational structure. However, new functionalities like data marts, quick search, outlier detection store data also in JSON format directly on file system. Now collector is installed and ready to be configured. However, before, I will review other installation scenarios. The auto installer image boot menu contains six options. The first one points collector installation with predefined volumes layout. The second is for legacy network cards. If you insert tab, you can manually define booting parameters. It is very valuable for physical machines where some additional flags can be set up. Third option starts installation of aggregator with predefined volumes layout. Next allows install aggregator with own file system partitioning and settings. The fifth one boots machine with minimal Red Hat kernel and provides access to some Linux recovery tools. The last one boots machine from primary hard disk, usable in case of bootloader problems. Now I'm changing the ISO installer to no auto version. This time the boot menu contains one more option. It allows to install collector with self-defined partitions and settings. If you plan to use the full disk encryption or create software right, the custom partition has to be selected for collector or aggregator installation. For full disk encryption, we need to select custom partition installation. Now graphical installer provides few possibilities to configure storage. 
Use all space. It is default option. Override all space and sets partitions automatically. The second option can use existing partitions, but all data will be removed. It is usable in case of appliance reinstallation. The shrink has no value because Guardium doesn't allow to extend the space used by MySQL after installation. Also, use free space option doesn't make sense because appliance probably will not use occasionally. Last option allows to configure partitions and volumes manually. In the bottom part of the window, we have possibility to switch full disk encryption on. I am checking this lock and use the automatic disk partitioning. Installer configured file systems and all space except boot partition will be encrypted. I need to provide encryption passwords, which will be inserted every time when system will be booted. Be aware that full disk encryption has influence on system performance and use this feature only if it is needed. There is also option to protect bootloader by password. If we agree that full disk encryption is mainly used to protect data in case of physical theft, in most situations there is no need to set it up. Then I am push installation forward. Now, when the system is booted, I need to provide passphrase to unencrypt disk and start collector services. In this example, I have created the VM template with three hard disks and it simulates physical machine with disk without write controller. I will install collector from no auto image to use custom partition installation. If you have the hardware write controller, you should set up the volumes before appliance installation. Write controller has to be natively supported by Red Hat 6. Now I'm selecting Create Custom Layout. I will create software write volumes. First one for boot partition. I'm creating 500 megabytes write volume on each disk. The boot partition support only write one, so third volume will be configured as a spare. When volumes exist, I can configure write device with X4 file system and point it as a put partition. The second write device will be write 5 for root file system and will cover most of the disk space. The rest of space I ordain for swap space configured in write 5.
Now my custom layout is ready. I have free software write devices and can continue collector installation. There is no special prerequisites for aggregator installation. However, you cannot change collector to aggregator on Conversely after the installation. Here I am selecting aggregator installation and waiting for login prompt. Please remember that central manager is the specific form of aggregator. When aggregator is booted first time, the message about aggregator setup is displayed on console. Now I will configure appliances. The first scenario focuses on standalone collector. In my case, it is located in subnet 192.168.100 with 24 bits mask. I will set up for each IP address and NIC on 111. The default gateway in this network ends on 254. Also, in the same network, I have DBWin machine, which is also DNS and NTP server, and its IP address ends on 20. The unattended installation leads to existence some default administration accounts with predefined one-time password, set to string GADI. The initial network configuration is managed from command line interface using CLI account. The OTP has to be changed during first login. The password strength policy exists, a new password must contain minimum eight characters, one capital letter, one digit, and one special character. The CLI shell is limited to set of Guardian administration commands without access to standard Linux shell. Now I'm changing default CLI password. Store network interface IP command allows set up the appliance IP address. This address is assigned to ETH0 network card. If you plan to use the second interface for access to portal, you can do that later from CLI or portal. Store network interface mask command sets netmask for local subnet. Store network routes default route defines local gateway. Store Network Resolver points DNS server. Collector approves up to three DNS server locations. All network settings will be assigned after network restart. This command takes time because it reconfigures many local services. Finally, I can check network connectivity using ping command.
Now, collector is accessible by network, so I can log in on it using SSH. Show system clock all command displays information about current time and time zone configuration. I'd like to use my local Warsaw CET time. The storage system clock time zone list command displays list of supported time zones. I found my local one and set it up. Time zone is correct, and now I will configure time synchronization with my local NTP server. I have no idea why, but store system NTP server command is interactive and expects definition up to three NTP servers. I'm inserting my dbwin IP address and confirm it. Finally, we should switch on the NTP client on the collector using store system NTP state on command and confirm that time is synchronized. We should also set up the hostname and domain name. Two simple commands, store system hostname and store system domain are defined for this task. On VMware Virtualization Platform, we have possibility to install VMware tools on the appliance, which integrates the Red Hat operating system with hypervisor. It improves overall performance and reliability of Guardium infrastructure. Guardium supports also Hyper-V, but I didn't notice possibility to install Hyper-V integration tools. To install VMware tools, we need to attach virtual VM tools CD-ROM to our VM machine. In the VMware workstation, this option is located inside VM menu. Then we can run installation using simp CLI command, setup VMware tools install. Installation is unattended and rolling boot image, so the best option after VM tools installation is system restore. Now we can manage virtual appliance using VMware utilities and applications. I finished the initial collector configuration and now I can log on to the portal. Portal is available on the port 8443 over HTTPS.
The fresh installed system brings with three special administrator accounts, admin, access and GR and guardian. I don't know the goal of existing the last one. All of them have one time password set to phrase guardian. Admin has admin rights and can change everything except users and user roles. Access and GR allows manage user roles and role based access control on data level. Now I am logging as an admin and change the password. The list of options is limited to few only because I need to import the license keys. Installation in standard architecture requires import minimum two keys, base software or hardware collector license and feature one. I put the base software collector key. The license agreement acceptance is requested. Then I'm inserting the data protection for database license key. The feature license can be attached to collector only if base license has been imported earlier. This time, the set of available options in menu changed because feature license activated Guardian functionalities. Additionally, I am adding two more keys. Data protection for files. and vulnerability assessment. System is licensed and ready to monitor data store. It's good time to create named user. I'm logging to Guardian as Access NGR. I need to change the default Guardian password. I don't see any value to have one more shared administration account, so I'm disabling Guardian one. Then I'm creating new personal administration account. I need to provide username and password. It will be one by password changed by user during first login. I need also put first and last name. Optionally, we can provide email address and do not forget activate account by unchecking the disabled field. Then we need set roles to user. Some roles are exclusive, especially access and GR and admin. If you create administrator account, these sets of roles should be okay.
I have created user and I will log in on this account. In most cases, the fresh installed appliances will require patch installation. If your browser has internet connectivity, you will be informed in the notification bar that some patches are available. You can switch to IBM Fix Central site directly from portal to download particular patch, but I prefer more systematic procedure. I suggest log into Fix Central and review all existing patches applicable for your Guardium environment. Using Find Product option, put Guardium Word and select IBM Security Guardian. Then pick Installed version, it is 10 in my case and select all in platform list. On identify fixes page, select rows for fixes, so it will generate the list all guardian patches starting from initial version 10 or 0. The list is split into a few parts. The first section refers to appliance patches. Now we need to check the current patch level of the appliance. Using user interface search, find patch related places and point the installed patches view. My fresh installed collector comes with patch 200 on board and I should install all patches which have been released for version 10 after patch 200. In practice, some patches covers content of area released, so remember that 3 digits patches are Guardian related, 4 digits starting from 6 are security ones and patch Red Hat, 4 digits starting from 4 are sniffer patches and only last one should be applied on the appliance. I identified four patches applicable for my collector. At the bottom of the download page, I'm pushing the continue button. Fix downloading is allowed for registered users only. The registration process is simple and doesn't require any valid contracts information. Finally, I can start download patches. I'm using Java-based IBM Download Director tool, but you can also use FTP or HTTP transfer. Patches are delivered as zipped archives. Each patch is archived, encrypted and signed. Inside archive you can find the patch release notes 
which very often contains important information. Information about patch dependency or special prerequisites. There are notes about fixed problems and patch vulnerabilities in case of security patch. Porter have the available patches report which points list of patches which can be installed on it. My list is empty because I need upload patches on collector first. There are many methods to deliver patch on appliance, but I prefer the HTTP upload. Guardian provides anonymous HTTP file transfer from defined IP address. To set up this service, execute from CLI the file server command. First parameter points IP address of client workstation, the place from patches will be uploaded, and the second one, the time how long the HTTP service will be active. Server is started and I connect to it from my workstation. The browse button allows select the patch for upload. You need unzip patch archive first and point only patch file instead of patch zip archive. And finally push file on collector using upload button. Successful upload will be notified and you can repeat procedure using back button. I upload it for patches and I'm closing the HTTP server. To do that, I need to push enter in the open it CLI session. If you uploaded patches, they are checked and registered on the appliance. Now we can check patch availability in the portal. It is possible to install patch directly from this view but I suggest you CLI if you would like to order patch installation in the strictly defined sequence. The command store system patch install provides possibility to download and install patch using FTP, SCP on burnt DVD. If patches have been uploaded, we can use sys subcommand to install patches stored locally on the appliance. Now I'm ordering four patches installation. Patches are pushed into a queue and will be installed in the background. Patch installation process can switch some services off or reboot system, so be patient and monitor patch installation status from CLI or portal. Patching takes time, especially if audit database is filled up. From CLI, you can use command show system patch installed. If portal is available, the install patches view shows current patching status.
In case of enterprise architecture, the appliance configuration differs from standalone one. However, reporting, time zone and clock, and naming should be set up for each appliance in the infrastructure independently. Now we would like to configure central manager, located in subnet 192.168.200. I set IP address, routing, DNS and time for fresh installed appliance. Show unit type command shows that new installed appliance is an aggregator. I'm logging to admin account to insert licenses. For enterprise, the base license installed on central manager has named central management and aggregation pack. Then I have installed all the requested feature licenses. Now I'm setting aggregator as central manager using CLI command store unit type manager. The portal has been restarted. I need login again. We can notice that appliance is registered as central manager and some additional functions are available. Later, I have also installed manually the patches and configured portal users. Central manager must be available for all appliances. In case of its damage or temporary absence, we will notice on manage nodes message about connectivity problem and all portal functions will be disabled. However, data will be gathered and analyzed. Guardium allows to configure the central manager backup, which can be promoted as a primary one in case of physical damage of current CM. Now I will configure CM backup located in the same network with last octet 112. From technical perspective, CM backup is also an aggregator. I have set basic configuration and now I will register unit in the central manager.
I've received a message, invalid short circuit. Short circuit is a security passcode. Only nodes with the same phrase can work together in the enterprise domain. It is also used as a seed for data encryption in the audit archives. To simplify administration, I suggest use long and strong literal and change it occasionally. Now I'm changing shared secret on this aggregator using CLI. On central manager, I'm setting it from portal. Unit registration can be requested from Joint Appliance or directly from Central Manager, so I'm doing it now. After a while, the new aggregator will appear on Central Manager view. Users, group, query, report, dashboard definitions will synchronize from CM to each attached to it appliance. Now I can log in to the aggregator using personal account created earlier on CM. I don't need install licenses on appliances registered to CM because central manager spread them over administrative domain. From central management on CM, I can set up the aggregator as a central manager backup using designate backup CM button. However, I will receive message that patch level of CM and attached aggregator are not the same. Just attached appliance is fresh installed one and has only patch 200 on board. but CM has been manually patched, so we need to patch aggregator to the same level. Central Manager allows to patch appliance remotely. From Central Management view, I'm selecting CMB aggregator and push patch distribution button. The list of available patches on Central Manager will be displayed. Now we can point requested patch and send demand for its installation on aggregator. Using patch installation status button, we can review status of remote patch installation. I've repeated remote patch installation for all available patches, and now systems are on the same level. I'm trying to designate aggregator as a CM backup again. This time everything is OK, and I'm selecting CMB and apply. This process takes a few minutes and can be monitored using aggregation archive log report.
when the status will change to succeeded, we can identify that our aggregator changed role to CM backup. If your primary CM will fail, you can quickly promote backup as a main one using make primary CM link. Now we configure CM and CM backup, and we can add other appliances, aggregators and collectors. Procedure is the same. Install appliance from ISO image. Configure basic network and time settings. Check connectivity. Set shared secret to phrase used on CM. Register unit in CM. After successful registration, restore John system. And finally, patch new attached appliance remotely from CM. In the meantime, I have connected to my environment two collectors, call 1 and call 3. On Central Manager, we can also check health status, all elements of Guardian infrastructure. More information about Guardian you can find on IBM website. Don't forget, check my other articles and videos on guardiannotes.wordpress.com.